Next, we move on to areas of regular polygons and circles. If you remember from our previous study, area of a regular polygon or a regular polygon's characteristics are that all sides and all angles are congruent and that the shape is convex. So all interior angles and sides are congruent, makes a regular polygon. So what is a regular polygon? We just discussed a polygon with all sides congruent and all angles congruent. It looks like any one of those shapes right there. So it is possible for any shape with any number of sides to be a regular figure or a regular polygon. We have a regular triangle, which is our equilateral triangle. We have a regular octagon, a square, a regular hexagon, and a regular pentagon pictured here. But really, any number of sides figures we could make into a regular shape. How can we find the area of a regular polygon? Well, a regular polygon is a little bit challenging. But it's nice because it does have consistent characteristics that makes it easy to calculate the area. We could try and divide the shape up into a bunch of triangles and get all of their areas. And that would work, but sometimes we don't have that information. So what we have is a formula, and that is the pieces of a regular polygon and the area. The center of the polygon, which we'll be able to find, and the apothem are the two pieces here we need to know about. The center of the polygon is simply that, the centermost point of the polygon. The apothem is a segment which reaches from the center of the polygon and is perpendicular to the side. So two things. First off, it has to be in the center. Next, it needs to be perpendicular to the side. It does not go to a corner. The apothem will never go into the corner of a polygon. The apothem will always go perpendicular to a side. Once we have that, the formula that we have is area of a regular figure, regular polygon, is equal to 1 half PA. P is perimeter. A is the length of the apothem. Here's a question. Find the area of this regular hexagon. Key point here is that it is a regular hexagon. Since it's a regular hexagon, we can use area equals one half perimeter times apothem. Perimeter, remember, is the distance around an object. Since this object is regular, it means all the sides are 10. So 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Six sides of 10. So area equals 1 half the perimeter, which is 60, times the apothem. Now remember, the apothem is from the center perpendicular to the side. On this question, we're given the apothem is 5 root 3. Since we have all the information, we can actually go ahead and multiply. 1 half of 60 is 30, and 30 times 5 is 150 times the square root of 3 inches squared. We have our answer. That is the area of this regular hexagon. Notice we didn't multiply it by the square root of 3. Since we didn't do that, we have an exact measurement. 150 times the square root of 3 is a very exact number. If I took and multiplied that on my calculator to get the decimal version, we would actually need to round in that case, and we would therefore no longer have an exact answer. We like our answers to stay this way. Find the area of a regular heptagon with side lengths of 9 centimeters. So a heptagon has 7 sides, and it looks like that. Well, let's look at the characteristics. First off, we have side lengths of 9, and since it's regular, all of them are 9. Let's write that down. So perimeter would be 9 times 7, or 63. We have the perimeter. What we don't know is the length of the apothem. To find the apothem again, remember we take from the center of the shape out to the sides. Perpendicular. So here's my center, and I'm going perpendicular to the side. 
That's what I need to find the length of. It is not 9 in this question. We actually need to figure it out. What I know is that this piece right here is 4.5. It's half of my side. Do you remember anything about the angles of a polygon? That's what's going to be very useful in this question. What we learned in our last chapter is that if I take n minus 2 times 180, I'll get the measurements in a heptagon. So 7 minus 2 times 180, or 5 times 180, which is 900, will give us our measurements. So we know that there's 900 degrees in that figure. But I only want one angle. I only want that much right there. What I do then is I take 900 and divide it by 7. That will give me approximately 128.6. But that's not really going to help us out either because we don't have a whole corner when we look at that triangle. We only actually have half of a corner. What we need to do is divide that 128.6 by 2. When we do that, we get 64.28 or 64.3. I'm going to draw this a little bit bigger now. So this is just the corner. This is 4.5. Here's our right angle. This is the apothem we're looking for. And our corner is 64.3. What we can use is SOHCAHTOA, sine, cosine, and tangent. From my angle, I look and I have an opposite and I have an adjacent. Tangent uses opposite and adjacent. I'm going to do tangent of 64.3 equals opposite over adjacent. If I cross multiply them, I take tangent of 64.3 multiplied by 4.5. And I get a length of 9.35. I now know that the apothem is 9.35. We can take that measurement back into our problem. We now know how long the apothem is. We have little a equals 9.35. We finally have enough information to calculate the area of our figure. We know that the perimeter is 63, and the apothem is 9.35. We just need to go ahead and multiply those things together. We take 1 half times 9.35 times 63. And we'll get 294. 0.53 centimeters squared. Now what I think it'd be very useful to do and get to get into your notes is to go ahead and figure out the measure of half of one angle. We're going to end up doing this quite a few times and it's really kind of a pain to go back constantly and having to recalculate that one angle since one angle in a regular polygon will never change. If I have a triangle, which is our three-sided figure, if that's a regular figure, regular triangle, that would make it 180 divided by 3. I'm going to get 60. If I had a four-sided, it's 90. Five-sided, 108. Six-sided, 120. Now if I just half all of those, there I go. I know 30, 45, and 54. I'll continue on and get the rest of the measurements here for you. I definitely would suggest having these written down in your notes.
take the time to do it. Make sure you know how I calculated them because on a test you're not going to have that information. However, for your notes, it's going to be really handy to be able to come back to this and look it up instead of recalculating it every time. Next, you'll remember I talked about SOHCAHTOA. If you don't remember the trig functions for SOHCAHTOA, I'll roll through them here and make sure you again write these down so that you'll have them easily accessible in your notes. The sine part, or the SO, is opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the tangent is opposite over adjacent. If you missed anything, make sure you go back and get it written down and pause it if you need to. The other piece that we're going to need, and that was also from chapter 7, is our 45, 45, 90 triangle, which would be x, x, x root 2, and our 30, 60, 90 triangle, which would be x across from the 30, 2x across from the 90, and across from the 60 would be x root 3. We're going to make sure to have all of this in our notes, otherwise you're going to have some problems when you need to look up this information. Next, how do you find the area of a circle? If you remember, the area of a circle is found by taking pi r squared, r being radius. So the area of a circle is pi times r squared. We're going to use that in this next question. It says, find the area of the white region. The polygon is regular. What we want to do here is we want to imagine you had a piece of paper or a round piece of paper and you took a hole puncher and you punched it right in the middle. So the light blue is now gone and we're just left with these little white corners out of the figure. Well, what we can do is if we can figure out the measurement or the area of the circle and then subtract the area of the regular polygon, I'll be left with the white area. So I'm going to take the circle, which is outlined in green, subtract the light blue regular polygon, and that will leave me what I want. The area of the circle is fairly easy, so we're going to leave that for later. The area of the hexagon is a little bit more challenging. First off, we need to draw in our perpendicular segment, which will be our apothem. The 8 is the distance from the center of the circle to the corner or the vertice of the regular polygon, and it also is the radius of the circle. The first thing we're going to jump back to is remember this is a six-sided figure. So I'm going to look at my notes and see six-sided figure. A corner is 120 degrees. Half of that would be 60. That's what I'm going to use because I have a regular polygon. This corner right down here is 60 degrees. That means the top is 30 because the apothem meets at a right angle. We have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. 60's here, 30's here, 90's here. What we need to remember is that across from the 90 is the 2x side. That means x equals 8. That x, oops, excuse me, x will be 4. Bad math there. x will be 4. That 4 will also go on the bottom. That 4 will also help us find the length of the apothem because the left side or the side opposite the 60 is x root 3. So I now know the apothem is 4 root 3. Now I need to find the perimeter. Well, I just found out that this piece right here is 4. That would mean this piece is also 4. So in our regular hexagon here, what we just found out is that the distance from the center to one vertex is actually the same as the length of the base or the length of a side. So we have 8, 8, 8, all the way around for all of our perimeters, or all of our side lengths. So if we take for perimeter, 8 times 6, we'll get 48. Our regular polygon formula, then, is area 
equals one half perimeter times the apothem. The easiest way here to do this is going to be to just leave this with the square root in our answer. So we're going to take one half of 48 times 4 to get 96 root 3. Remember, this is the area, and I'll put a little r underneath here, area of our regular figure. Next, if you remember, I said we need to get the area of the circle. Area for any circle is pi r squared. In this question, the radius is 8. So we have pi times 64 squared, or simply 64 pi. What we'll want to do now is take the circle whose area is 64 pi and subtract the pentagon, or excuse me, hexagon, whose area is 96 root 3. So we have 64 pi minus 96 root 3. Doing that all at one time on the calculator is the easiest way to do it, and you will get 34.79. And we were measuring this in millimeters. So our answer would be millimeters squared. Now there was a lot in this video. Make sure you've taken extremely good notes and it might even take a second watching of this video to catch everything and make sure that your notes are as complete as possible. If there's anything you didn't understand from this one, please make sure to come to class and ask questions.